Hey guys, I just wanted to rant about something and uh, let you owners of the SL1200s know that you're destroying your turntables. I'm talking about head shell lickers. DJs will commonly lick the head shell in order to achieve better connectivity because, well, they don't have time to troubleshoot. It's a fucking club. They've got a bunch of people in there. They're trying to rock the house and all of a sudden one channel drops out. Get your turntable serviced. It's probably the RCA cable. This one got the RCA cable replacement. Channel's out. And if we look down into the tone arm socket, if the camera will focus, there we go. You see all those little cruddy bits in there. Corrosion. It's pitted, it's disgusting. There's a lack of connectivity there. And you can see that the outer sheathing for the ground of the head shell is also pitted and corroded. Your saliva is salt water, and it will utterly destroy the contacts inside of these turntables. Now, if you eat too much of the contact metal away, you can, to an extent, solder some material on the end of it as kind of a last-ditch effort. But really, you got to either take the tone arm apart and replace that socket, or you got to replace the arm. And the arms are expensive on these turntables if you buy a brand new one. You can buy used ones on eBay that are quote unquote okay, but you're still spending sixty to seventy dollars for an arm. Uh, you can find them cheaper, I suppose, but they're questionable. Uh, there are counterfeits, so don't lick the head shell. If for some reason you come across one of these things that has this problem, what you can do is is you can get. A, uh, an exacto knife, that's what I commonly do. I can get this silly thing to focus on the socket here, I'll show you. But it's not going to want to do it. Okay. So, what you can do is you can take an exacto knife and you can get down in here with it and you can scrape away at the uh, brass contacts. I need to get something a little bit sharper. Hold on. Okay, let's try something sharper. And with the tip of the exacto knife, you can just kind of scrape things off here. It's really helpful to have two hands. But you can see I'm taking all of the gunkies and the carbon and the corrosive stuff off. It's just going to take you a lot of time. So all these have to get cleaned up and you might want to try to stick a little emery thing in there on a q-tip and resurface it some. I'm going to pause this so that I can uh, clean the remaining contacts and then we'll look at the finished product. Okay so now you can see that I've cleaned all the gunk off and it's nice and abraded looking. And what we're going to do as kind of a final thing is uh, squirt some deox in there and then attach the head shell. And then we'll see if we get uh, signal on both sides. So what I like to use is just the plain old uh, S5 shield, which isn't any corrosive. And we'll just get a little spritz of it in there. Let me get a towel to clean up the excess. All right, let's put our head shell in here. Now I don't tighten it down. I get it close to being tight. And then I will wiggle the cartridge carrier back and forth inside the socket which will uh, work with the deox to clean the remaining garbage and then tighten it down and let's check our amplifier all the way up there's barely a hum let's fade over to the right let's fade over to the left 
All right. Looks like we have uh, independent stereo movement there, so very good. Anyway, don't lick your head shells. It's bad. You'll eat up the contacts in your arm, but that's just a brief explanation on how to fix it in the short term. Take it into a shop, see why the channel's cutting out. It's probably your RCA cable. Might be a bad cartridge carrier too. Try that, but not before cleaning the arm socket. Hope this was useful to you guys of uh, 1200 Mark II, M3D, MK5, etc. All that type of tone arm uh, usually befalls that problem if it's in a club with a DJ. Anyways, more to come soon.